Welcome back to KSP 1.4, making history, and it looks like we just have above 300 signs here, so uh, we may as well take a look in research and development. Now, because I'd put in a few mods, there is now the community tech tree. Now, this does expand things quite a bit more late game, but because we don't have that many mods, a lot of these nodes are actually empty, There's nothing in them. But the community tech tree project, well, not that one, <laughs> that is fine too. The community tech tree project is more... Uh, to ensure that other mods can actually put stuff of theirs in a suitable node that may be really late in the tree because there, there are some interstellar mods and there are other kind of things like that but it shouldn't affect us because we're mostly vanilla so still in this pretty uh, still in this um pretty normal area of the tech tree so what do we actually have to get to in here well if you remember i purchased the nuclear propulsion which we're, we're using to great effect now however there was some other things down here unmanned technology so we had the seismic sensor pod an impact hammer ascent landing space plane and uh, new probes i like that very much and i think that would be useful high power yeah high power solar and electrics let's take this one though uh, we've got a bunch of things that we can buy let's just purchase them all We've got enough money, 762,000. And then we've got to go and uh, see about flying our intrepid astronauts back from EVE. But before we go to EVE, I just want to show you Juno because I did break orbit from where we previously left this. I broke orbit from Ike and we got back to Juno. So uh, Expedition 4 and fly. They're in a fully eccentric orbit, I think. Let's take a look once they, uh, they load. Yeah, so here they are on our craft, if you remember it. And there's Juna. Looks a little bit farther away because it is. We, I literally, oh, the only thing I did was break away from Ike's sphere of influence. Ike is obviously quite massive by comparison to Juna. And uh, that means, you know, this is about its sphere of influence. A little bit further out and we would uh, enter Orbiter and Ike again. So uh, this is probably the, the way that we will stay until... Um, until the transfer window, which is one year, 105 days left to go. So let's move over to the EVE craft and see if we can set them up. Okay, here we are out at EVE. Uh, we do have this previous craft that didn't have universal storage. We haven't improved. Remember, I don't have a scientist on board. So capturing any extra sites here is probably not really going to be a thing. We could get an EVA report, I suppose, and a crew report if we wanted to go out to Gilly. Uh, Gilly is really quite small though. We're not on the same inclination because I was just not expecting to go there. So you'll see we're way off. That will cost us 1500 or more of our Delta V plus whatever it takes to rendezvous with Gilly and then get back out again. So instead we've got this uh, particular uh, maneuver plotted and this is a return maneuver out to uh, Kerbin. So if you'll see where we go around here you'll see uh, it goes out to Kerbin over here. However, we're not going to get an encounter at the moment. We're basically, as it's saying here, recommended starting interplanetary transfers uh, from something in the same plane. Okay, so it sort of wants us to change inclination. And uh, I think it's close enough that we can just say, well, that's a good thing because we are slightly off from the rest of the planets anyway. So we can probably just adjust it part way around and get that done. Uh, yeah, let me, in fact, let me play with this a little bit more, see if there's any way to get an encounter or close to an encounter. So in the end, I did do the plane change just because I had plenty of fuel. We still got 4000, in fact, and that just made it easier to plot a maneuver. The maneuver then would, will take us and it's just about to do that six minutes of burning, though. Um, so that's going to be interesting, but uh, it will take us very close uh, to about 85,000 kilometers. That's quite close on interplanetary scales. And of course, we can then map another maneuver to correct that just as we're coming around to get ourselves, you know, down towards the right kind of height. Are we behind the planet? Yeah, we are. There we go. And him, we come towards the maneuver. I guess I can even close this. Oh, service bay is locked because we're in time warp. Uh, let's delete and close the alarm. 
Once it comes out of time warp, we should be able to close it. Yeah, Let's close that. And, um, well, now, I guess. So, at this point, it's pretty much uh, just a matter of me waiting, off camera, of course. And then we'll do a correction halfway around. We've still got one year, 43 days for our Junocraft to come back. So, this one's definitely going to be coming back first with its science. Uh, but the treasure trove of tra uh, science is, of course, on that Junocraft because of all the stuff we did around Ike and Juna and uh, the scientists on board. So, I will see you around halfway around. And here we come up to our mid-course change. And you can see Minmus, Kerbin, and I uh, can't see the moon there, but uh, yeah, they're all over there. That's distant object enhancement. They obviously wouldn't be that big if, uh, if we were doing this probably properly. They would be out of sight, or at least a dot. At least now we have these. So thanks very much for a commenter that said you can set distant object enhancement to show names when you hover over them. Yep, just a tick box in the distant object enhancement settings. And you're done, really. Um, so there we go. This maneuver is done. Or close to. And there we are. So 133 periapsis. And now we're going to add a maneuver. Uh, we're going to set that to circularize, but we're, we're not going to spend that much. I think we're going to do the same thing as we did before. We're going to make this a an eccentric orbit. Like this. Perhaps not quite as far as the moon radius, but still far enough out there. That's a whole lot cheaper. Not that we need to conserve fuel, of course, but it's a whole lot cheaper. Or rather, because of my current craft, a whole lot faster. That's the more important point. And uh, then once we're into this loop, we can drop our periapsis when we're out here uh, very, very cheaply indeed. And we, we can have tons of fuel that we can then discard into the atmosphere of the planet. Of course, that's, that's just how uh, rocket disposal works, really. Uh, unless you leave it orbiting up there for years. In any case, uh, we want to do this one as well. So we've got 396 days until the Juno to Kerbin. So we still need to go ahead with this maneuver. And uh, this should bring us sort of ready to actually descend into the planet's atmosphere, of course. So around we go. 61 days, so yeah, we're still far, far in advance of that transfer window. And it seems that the, um, the transfer window planner versus Mechjeb's transfer uh, system disagree about <laughs> when the transfer windows are. I'm not sure why that is. If anyone knows, please let me know in the comments. But they do seem to say the next transfer window, as far as Mechjeb's concerned, is usually later than transfer window plotter or transfer window planner. There we go. Um... Could be to do with our settings, I suppose. The sort of time of flight options that we're allowing ourselves. That may be it, but we'll see. Okay, so in we come for this burn. We're almost back home. Of course, we're going to need to uh, spend a little bit of time burning just because this engine is nowhere near as good as the ones we're used to close to Kerbin anyway. And I'll see you for the descent. And I changed my mind a little bit. I thought I'd use some of this extra fuel to bring this orbit down circular so that I can get a decent chance of getting somewhere near the space center when we actually land. I thought it'd be nice to try and, uh, well, not hit the target, but uh, come down close to it anyway. So we're burning off this extra fuel now. Normally I wouldn't do this, of course, but uh, I thought it'd be entertaining. Something to actually try and get close to. We're not quite on the right inclination. We'd need to change our inclination a little bit. Um, yeah, and we've probably already passed it here. So again, I can use some more of that fuel to bring down our inclination if we want to. And there goes the Apo and Perry. So there should be swapping. There we go. So if we really want to, we can change the inclination. I don't want exactly what the inclination of the Kerbal Space Center is. Can I actually target it? It'd be nice if you could target ground locations and then say match inclination with that. That would actually shortcut this quite a bit. Let's just take a look at uh, inclination. What is our current incline? Oh, no, no, that's if you tell me what our current inclination is. It's going to be on one of the one of the windows, isn't it? Uh, inclination, there we are, 13 degrees. So why don't we bring that down to, say, something like 8 degrees and create a node. And you'll see that's fine. It must be at zero. Uh, in fact, yeah, it is at zero. What am I thinking about? I'm just being silly. Create a node. How much is that going to cost? 500. No problem at all. Let's just execute that one. Uh, pretty much because, yeah, there it is. It's on zero. 
I always remember because it just you just head straight east and you end up in a zero inclination orbit. I always forget about it though. Uh, that's fine. So we'll change ourselves to inclination zero, and then we'll plot a descent. We're using trajectories, which will show our descent when we're in the atmosphere, uh, to hopefully hit hit the space center or get very very close. The uh, difficulty, of course, is that the trajectories mod, unfortunately, it would be nice if the trajectories mod could also show you the surface of the planet and where it would be when you come down. It doesn't. It just shows you your path on the current planet's surface. So you can't really count for rotation, so then you just have to sort of guess. That's fine. Guessing is okay, but uh, it'd be nice if we could do something else. Anyway, I'll burn for inclination, and we'll see you uh, on the other side of it. We're going to come down into the atmosphere. Okay, so here we are. I've done a few more orbits, just so that the, uh, the landing will be in the daytime, just to give you an idea. And now I'm just going to point ret as retrograde. In fact, we can just go via SES. Uh, sorry, turn S smart ASS off and turn SAS on. Go retrograde. And let's just burn and we'll see. Now, this will be moving eastward. Uh, so I'm probably going to aim about here. Because we're about half an orbit away. So let's just fire. And bring ourselves into the upper atmosphere. And you'll see trajectories take over, I, I would hope. 70 kilometers. There it is. Yeah, so it's very twitchy at this point. So this, oops, uh, I need to do more retrograde, in fact. Uh, yeah, so at this point, you'll see that's that X is where it's expecting us to hit the ground. So we want, sort of want to hit the, hit the ocean around about here, uh, or at least the west edge of this, and we'll see how far that is away and judge that for future attempts. OK, so let's just turn caps lock on for a second. And we'll bring that dot all the way around just by burning very carefully. And I, here it comes over the horizon. Let's just increase that burn rate. OK, and let's say right about there. OK, that's where trajectories expect. And of course, it's saying that that will be around here. Well, so I suppose that it does give us an indication because if that's where we eventually will land, that's where it's expecting us to be. So let's just try and see if that will be accurate if you use the cross. If it is, I'll be very, very happy. Let's just bring it in. So that's as close as we can get it. And uh, then let's just see if we can burn a little bit normal. Uh, sort of on target anyway. Uh, that's the wrong direction, isn't it? Anti-normal. And it's updating even with a short amount of roll. There we go, and a little bit more retrograde. Okay, so that's where it's saying we are, and it's presumably updating that X because of um, essentially our cross-section to the air. You know, the bigger the cross-section, the more or less we actually present towards the planet. So at this point, uh, the main problem is usually that when we hit the top of the atmosphere, this will update because we'll be losing the rest of our stage. But we'll see how far off that's going to be and again adjust for future trips. All right, so let's bring ourselves around, all the way around until we're about here. And then we'll hit the top of the atmosphere. We'll turn normal or anti normal, doesn't really much matter which, eject and get ready for the rest of it. So uh, here we come. It's very hard to see. I need to put some lights on this thing. Uh, is there any lights on board? Well, there is a tiny, tiny light. <laughs> we're coming over the horizon anyway, and we're just about to hit the atmosphere. So there's the top of the atmosphere. Let's point ourselves normal and lose the stage. Point ourselves retrograde again. Trajectory prediction stopped. Too many iterations. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's not going to be any good if that's what happens to us. We've pushed it normal, and now, for some reason, we're not going to hit the ocean? Hmm, okay, never mind. But we'll be in the, uh, essentially, in the atmosphere, which will slow us down, and this will 
re-update again once we're a little bit lower. So let's time warp, physical time warp now, as we come over the horizon. See our poor little vessel caught in Kerbin's gravity. There's not much we can actually do now, except hope. And if I said Kerbal's instead of Kerbin, then I meant Kerbin's gravity. But uh, there's the trajectory cross, and here we are. So it is going to be less, certainly. So we are going to miss, unfortunately. Well, maybe. Uh, yeah, we are going to miss. We are going to come down too soon, probably in the mountains. But it'll be in sight, more importantly. Hopefully. Uh, could we fly in a little bit closer? I don't think we could, really. Yeah, 28, 27. Well, this is closer than, uh, than most of my trips. <laughs> so there it is. It's slowing us down quite significantly, and we're heading towards the ground. So let's bring ourselves back. Now our drogue shoots can actually uh, can take over. Get a little bit close to the ground, but uh, yeah, our speed is really bleeding off now, so there's really not much we can actually do. Let's drop our drogue shoots, drop our mains. And it's a short, short trip towards the ground. Hopefully a quite comfortable trip for our poor astronauts. There we go, 3,000, 2,000. And here we come in for a landing. Ooh, that was our heat shield. We could have dropped the heat shield, but it absorbs a bit of impact. Recover the vessel. And see what we get. This course is all the EVE science. Well, <laughs> all the EVE science one engineer and one pilot can scrape together between the two of them. Uh, we'll get a scientist out there next time. So 717, that's more than enough for a couple of 300 nodes. Very, very good indeed. Uh, parts value, well, we get our command pod back and uh, little bits of pieces. And more importantly, hey, Nielden, he's up to level four. Cool. All right, so that means maybe we can select some more science. We got back up to 851 because we returned some people. And High Power Electrics then unlocks for us. And we're going to just take that. I'm not even going to debate. Uh, what I'm going to debate is probably the next options. Um, specialized Control. It's, yeah, that's the Space Y, or some of this early Space Y stuff. Thrust Block. Monoprop tank, and uh, that's a really cool looking thrust block. Field science? We always want more science. Exocurbal core drill, rover autopilot. Well, that's a rover. Uh, don't really need rovers. Oh, not all that much. We get extra science, but other than that. Uh, okay, so we've got heat shields, very large heat shields from Space Y. That is the mod I added. The 10 meter heat shield, that's quite useful for landing stuff on Juna really, really does help for aero capture, uh, even aero braking for landing with that. And uh, what are the other nodes? Composites, advanced metalworks. Advanced metalworks is the winch, some launch clamps, new docking ports. Composites gives us a micro goo containment pod. That's quite nice to be able to uh, move that around. So soil moisture sensor, that's the universal storage version. Um, thrust plates from Space White. I quite like thrust plates. The larger protective shell. Inline clampertron. Don't nearly need that all that much. Structural panels. Again, don't really need that. Uh, is there anything else we can afford? Really, activator activators. The Gorsat, possibly. Nuclear power. Nothing in that node. Or unless we get to very heavy rocketry. That needs, ah, we need to actually upgrade our R&D for that node. So there's not really much else uh, that I can see, because all this stuff is uh, community tech tree, except for these. So why don't we, uh, the core drill that collects core samples to look for activity. Yeah. I think we're just going to have to get a rover at some point. That gives us some science. Yeah. Let's just get the rover. There we go. So those that's those parts bought. We're down to 117 science. But we're not quite. 
because we've got to get the other craft back. And this shouldn't be much of an issue. I'm not going to show you the rest of the, um, you know, the plotting for that this craft because it's exactly the same as the one you've just seen, except coming back from Juna. So we'll just skip that and uh, show you sort of the re-entry section, shall we? Except I will show you one thing. Remember when I said that um, we were orbiting Juno? We were. We're not anymore. <laughs> At some point, Ike must have come along uh, while we were orbiting, and it would have got too close, and it's flung us outwards. So we are actually outward of Juno. There it is. Now, we can probably get a re-encounter with Juno, but we don't exactly need to. So again, now I'm sort of going to need to do a rendezvous with... Uh, with Kerbin, um, set that as the target, and then try a home and transfer. So let's just see when that will actually be. 325 days. Um, right, is there any way to make that any closer? Uh, I assume it won't let us just do transfer to planet because of um, uh, the next transfer window. No, it won't let us do that. So home and transfer, 333 days is the transfer window, so presumably that's close enough. Yeah, 325 days. So let's just add an alarm for that. And that will do. And then, of course, we'll just have to manipulate the, the orbit to try and get us a, uh, an encounter there. So let me just make some changes. And, uh, in fact, we've got... Yeah, it's pretty close already. Um... Let's just see, where is the closest approach is 84,000. So again, we can probably tweak that in and add a little bit. And uh, I'll see you once we're back towards Kerbin. But just thought it'd be quite interesting that we got flung out by Ike and uh, aren't around Juno anymore. I mean, we come towards Kerbin, ready for our burn. And again, this time, oh well, this time I've actually tried to get us to come in at almost zero inclination. Uh, 3.7 degrees or so, that's not too bad. And that will do for our burn. And we'll circularize again so that we can try and get down towards the surface. This time, of course, the plane change will be, uh, the inclination change will be quite cheap. And probably we'll aim our cross for trajectory just to the east of uh, the island airfield with our engines attached. And then uh, we'll see what that actually has an effect as we hit the top of the atmosphere and dump our engines. And here we go, let's try this again. So rotating to retrograde. Uh, I'm just gonna turn caps lock on and we will start burning. Bring ourselves into the atmosphere, here comes our peri. It's gonna hit the atmosphere. And around comes the cross. Is that enough? Maybe a little bit more. Yeah, I wanna say that is good enough for me. And we'll see how close we actually get from that point. So. I want to head to around about here. It is going to be in darkness, unfortunately, but uh, that won't be too much of an issue. At least not for me. <laughs> for you guys, maybe a bit more. Uh, here we come. And we've got a nice connection anyway if you want to transmit science, but we don't need to do that. Hopefully everything's going to go fine. And yeah, unfortunately it's in darkness. Um, our lights, again, just that tiny, tiny little lighting sort of system. Uh, let's uh, we're in the top of the atmosphere now, so we're going to retract both solar panels. I probably have that hot keyed. Yeah, we'll retract them both. I'm going to point normal again. And now we're going to eject. And point retrograde again. Okay, now a lot of our science is still on board here in this ring of universal science beneath. So let's see, if, did that actually affect things? Yeah, you see that... that. That really did affect things. Now it's saying that we're going to land on the mountains. Maybe it depends on other things. I may need to move that cross further over when we do this in future. However, we're heading down to the atmosphere now. Nothing much for it except to time walk forwards. And let's see how accurate that cross is. Let's see. Where are we? Yeah, we're coming around. We should be coming into the daytime. Well... Not until we're almost landed, in fact. So I'll see you when we're a whole lot lower. And here we are in the, the marshmallow burning part of the atmosphere. And here's a sort of conical marshmallow. 
almost. Uh, we've got our scientist and our pilot who are having fun. Might be getting a little bit heated. Uh, but now our trajectory is saying we're going to drop well short. So, yeah, unfortunately, we're not going to get any closer, even though I move that cross further out. This is obviously a much heavier craft. So it'd be nice if that was actually predictable. However, it's not. So let's just launch the first set of our drogues. All right, that's one set out. And that's going to slow us down. All right, now it's going to drop us to about 300. Second set's going out. All right, and now we can pull the main chute. And if we need the backups, we can. Uh, I may, well, it depends what speed we're going to come down to when I decide whether we're going to actually drop that heat shield or not. So let me fast forward a little bit until the first set fully deploy, which should be happening anytime soon. 5,000 maybe? No? 3,000? There we go. Yeah, 3,300. So speed's dropping to 28. Yeah, we need to... Is that the main sheet deployed? No, it's not deployed yet. Okay, let's drop the uh, larger parachutes as well. So those are our backups. We're definitely making sure this thing is slowing down. <laughs> it needs to actually get to the point where it deploys, though. So we need to head a little bit lower. And let's turn SAS off. We don't need that any longer. So there we go. It's going to come down to 7.2, and I'm happy to just leave the heat shield on at that point. And in we come after a long, long trip for our final landing. Just around some trees. And there we go. Recover vessel. And we should have all the science and all the money from that mission. So, well, that those two missions that we got for Ike. Let's see how much that actually gives us now. Here comes the window. So 1,480 science. Amazing. Great. And 1.38 million credits. So really good. The part value, we obviously recovered all of the orbital telescopes, the RWS antennas, magnetometer boom. So lots and lots of funds recovered. 46,000 funds of whatever it cost to launch, probably about 100,000 or so, maybe a bit less than that. So having that universal storage on board, or you could put the regular ones, if you didn't want to put universal storage in, put the regular ones inside science bays or something and put them above the uh, the heat shield. The only downside to doing that, and that's very important, is if you make that top section taller, you will be changing its um, aerodynamics. And if you make it too tall, it won't be stable. So you will either have to use a uh, an inline wheel all the way in, or you'll have to do something to make sure that that heat shield is facing down. You could potentially use something like the large heat shield, you know, the Juno one, the inflatable one, because when that inflates, it then presents a much wider base. And even if you've got a taller, a, a taller top section behind it, it's still aerodynamically stable. All right, so that's pretty much it for this episode. We've got a lot of stuff done. Next episode, we'll probably look at some upgrades for the uh, the space center and uh, spend this science so until then i hope you've enjoyed the episode feel free to like subscribe and share and of course we'll see you next time and as always guys thanks for watching